You are now recording. Uh, hello, everyone. Welcome to this meeting on Thursday, May 11th, 2023 of the Community Preservation Act Committee. Uh, <clears throat> this meeting is being conducted via Zoom as uh, accorded by the town and state. It is being recorded uh, and will appear at a later point in time on the town website. I'm going to call on members of the committee now to make sure that they can be heard and that uh, they can hear me. So when I call your name, just uh, confirm. Uh, Katie? Yes, here. We can hear Katie. Robin? Present. Tim? Yes, I'm here. Sam, you, I see you from your eye, eyes up. <laughs> I don't know. Interesting. I'm not able to see myself on the screen anywhere. Oh. Okay, uh, I can only see half your head. Looking a little bit like Kilroy. Let's, let's adjust the view. Thank you very much, Tim. I don't know no, what's... No problem. I'm not able to see myself. Can you tell me when it's correct? Well, is it your looking? better half? Other How direction. It? Push it the other direction. Push it in the other direction. We're seeing the top of your head. How about now? Keep going, keep going. Keep going. Yeah. There, perfect. <laughs> wow. Okay, I'm going to do one other adjustment here. Thank you. It seemed to have been good. Is it still visible? Oh, yeah. That's all right. right. Wonderful. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to our <laughs> technology uh, outtakes. <laughs> so, uh, Katie, Rob, and Tim, uh, Matt. I'm here. Michelle. Present. David. Present. So those are our members, I believe. I'm not seeing everyone on the screen. Uh, I see six members, and I think that's everyone. Uh, Sean, I also see us here. He is uh, occupied currently doing uh, double duty with a uh, child at home uh, due to uh, uh, availability issues. Uh, Jen uh, is here to assist if we need. So thank you all for uh, being able to attend the meeting on relative short notice. Uh, hopefully it'll be a relatively quick meeting. Uh, the intent is just to take care of a few items that remain for our current cycle. Um, the first item on the agenda is to approve minutes. There were two sets of minutes sent to you all. I didn't receive any further edits. Uh, one was from December 15th and the other was from December 15th. Um, if, so I'm gonna make a motion unless I hear from someone. Uh, to the contrary, does it, well, let me start this way. Does anyone have any additional edits they'd like to make to the December 15th minutes? Sam, one of them, I don't have it in front of me. One of them didn't have the author of the minutes. Okay. Uh, do you recall which one? No, I don't. Okay. That might, I'm looking at them right now. And thank December you. December 15th. December 15th. So we will make that edit, Tim, accordingly, and we can proceed thereafter. Uh, anyone else? Okay. So I'm going to make a motion that we approve the minutes, the minute drafts for December 15th, 2022, as provided. Is there a second? A second. We have a motion and we have a second. I'm going to go ahead with a roll call vote to aye or yes is approved, no or nay or abstain. Uh, I call your name, please respond. Tim? Aye. Matt? Aye. Michelle? Aye. David? Aye. Katie? Aye. Robin? Aye. And I will vote aye as well. So that is seven to zero. I realized I did not include one thing here, which is we need to have a minute taker for this evening's meeting. Uh, would anyone like to volunteer? It's probably a short meeting. No takers? I'll volunteer, but I'll warn everyone, it took me six months to do my last set of minutes. <laughs> uh, do, you, do you think these might be able to be done a little bit? quicker if they're short so <laughs> all right if not we can talk later and just get them done so okay great so this one approves by a vote of seven to zero um the meeting the minutes of december 22nd 2022 um any edits that weren't already sent 
to either Michelle or myself. No comments. Okay, I assume that means they're fine. Uh, I'd like to make a motion that we approve the minutes of December 22nd, 22nd, 2022, as provided. Second. We have a second. I'm going to do a roll call vote. Uh, Tim. Aye. Matt. Aye. Michelle. Aye. David. Aye. Katie. Aye. Robin. Aye. And I will vote aye as well. That is a uh, passed by a motion of seven to zero. Very good. So uh, the public comment is next on the agenda. I'm not able to see myself, the uh, uh, panelists or, or attendees here, uh, Jen, uh, but if you see someone raising their hand, could you communicate? Uh, I'd like to ask if there is any uh, individual who wishes to make a public comment in the audience. Give it an, I, I see Michelle, you're speaking, but we can't. I don't, I don't see any attendees. Oh, reference, the, yeah. There were two before they seem to. Okay. Have okay. Uh, given that there are no attendees seeking to make a public comment, uh, we will move on. So the uh, primary issue related to calling of a meeting is to uh, get us through the current cycle. Um, we have a current fiscal year 23 cash balance in the amount of $164,463 that we did not take action on when we last met in December. There was a tabled project that we had held off on and Sonia had indicated that we would want to take action were we to wish to have that in the current uh, cycle uh, by March. The applicant, I've spoken with uh, town staff who have been in communication with the applicant and with the applicant themselves. They're not currently uh, ready in a position to move forward. They've been interacting with town staff on a greater plan and seeking to get additional estimates. Uh, therefore, uh, given that, I think it's in our committee's interest to retain the capacity to make decisions in the fiscal year 24 cycle uh, so that the cash is available if need be, if they come back uh, with a uh, whether it be another project or whether these folks come back with some more clarity for us. Um, so I'm going to make a motion, which is that we move to recommend the establishment of a budgeted reserve for fiscal year 2024 in the amount of $164,463. That is, move to recommend to establish the establishment of a budgeted reserve for fiscal year 2024 in the amount of $164,463. Second. Um, we have a second. I think Michelle got in there first. Okay. Um, discussion. Katie. I just had a couple of clarifying questions, Sam, about the 164, just because I, um, I wasn't sure that wasn't the total amount for that one project. Is that correct? It was not that one project, uh, which is distinct from this motion, had an yes. initial request for a very large dollar amount. Then they came right. in with a lower amount right. uh, of a there was an estimate that was uh, committee members wanted to see a bit more clarity and there are committee members also wanted to see a greater level of overall long-term planning. Mm -hmm. uh, we set aside as a committee that dollar amount, which would have been that kind of soft estimate, I guess, uh, would be my phrase for it, uh, along with an additional 500,000, oh, excuse me, 5,000 for uh, HPR restrict, historic preservation restrictions. Right. Uh, so it did align essentially with what we were considering the range for that product project. Okay. okay. But we were awaiting uh, additional information, more clarity, and uh, there's not readiness at this point in time. Yeah, that's no, that's helpful. I I looked quickly at the minutes, and I 
remember the discussion, but I just was looking for the amount and we're not aligning the reserve with this now. What we're saying is we want to have a reserve for fiscal year 24 with this vote. Correct. Uh, and that allows us the chance to make to have discussion and vote on that for whatever purpose. Uh, for whatever purpose. And okay, I, spoke, I had spoken uh, with Sean on a number of occasions regarding this and uh, he concurred. Uh, and I also initiated this meeting in recognition with Sonia's comments uh, uh, towards the end of last year, which was that we really had choices of either doing nothing with the funds and if we don't allocate them, then they kick in to 2025, fiscal year 2025. Uh, but by making this motion, it gives us the flexibility to decide what we wish to do. Uh, so this is a essentially a retention of the funds for our own flexible uh, usage come the new fiscal year cycle. And I also have concerns about um, later on this cycle uh, with uh, members not always being available and the town council not being able to make determinations in the near term to uh, for any budgeted decision it's it, it's time for us to to take action so any additional comments or um sam when so when we put this into fy24 if the um, applicant comes back and we decide to move forward with them when can they access the funds because we're moving them, or excuse me, we're making the recommendation to move them. It's a town council decision, of course. So we're getting ahead of that. We make the recommendation, but if they are moved into fiscal year 2024, uh, fiscal year 2024 commences on July 1st. So these funds are available uh, if they are appropriated through our vote and through the uh, Finance Committee and Town Council from July, potentially from July 2nd through um, June 30th of okay. next year. Right. If we weren't to do anything, they wouldn't be available until the next cycle commencing July 1st of 2024. Okay, thank you. Hopefully that was clear. Matt. So I have just a couple of general questions. I didn't receive an agenda. Is this the only agenda item or are there other things we're going to discuss? Uh, there's one other item on the agenda. It is in the packet. Um, I'm sorry that they weren't sent out uh, from the standard processes. Um, the other items on the agenda is looking at the fiscal year 24 application date, excuse me, considering the dates we wish to open the fiscal year 24 application. Uh, and also looking at the um, previous application so we can consider any changes we want to make. Okay. Uh, I, I have another I have another process question. What's the status with has the town council already voted on our recommendations for 2023? Both yes, the, uh, the, the report was put together uh, by myself and Sonia last um, January and sent out to all members, uh, and I included the comments from other members as well. Uh, hopefully you all received that, and then subsequent to that I had to present to the Finance Committee. Uh, this would have been in early to mid-February. And soon thereafter, there was a vote by the town council to confirm. So all of those uh, recommended recommendations that we made were confirmed by the town okay. council. So that was approved. And the I could send I could look up the um, link okay. to that so, meeting. So, so maybe maybe for future in the future, probably we should have just put this in budgeted reserve back in December, and then because. Then we wouldn't have to re go through this process. Uh, it's open for discussion. It was suggested, and the question was whether or not there would have been a timely uh, follow up from uh, yeah. for which we could have considered it. Some members yeah. wanted to proceed in a in a more current fashion, and we didn't have a okay. decision at that time, so we tabled it. But I yeah. hear what you're saying, Matt. And in retrospect, given what transpired from uh, last. December or early January until now. Uh, yes, that's that's the outcome. Okay. Any other 
comments, questions. <clears throat> so we have a motion and we have a second. Uh, I'll read the motion again. Move to recommend the establishment of a budgeted reserve for fiscal year 2024 in the amount of $164,463. Uh, I do have a question, sorry. Yes, Tim. Were, did we have a zero, I can't remember to be honest with you, did we have a zero reserve and then this is going to be the total reserve or did we have a dollar figure reserve and this is added to that so it's a bigger number? Do you yeah. remember? I don't recall. At, at present, we have not set aside any funds into fiscal year 2024. In fiscal okay. year 2023, which was this previous cycle through uh, June 30th of this year, there was this dollar amount, $164,463. But given that it's, and, and it must be spent or utilized fiscal year 2023, which is six right. weeks. Uh, so given that that time frame, nothing's going to transpire, we now have a decision to make, which is do we wish to keep it potentially usable in fiscal year 2024 or do we do nothing and then it is becomes available only in fiscal year 2025 which is a full year away yes matt and so there's been no updates to the projections so the the the, the 164,000 is the same as as what it was back in december this number was provided by the town finance department uh, by sean so yes, that's correct. It's and the same number as we were considering before. There's no update. There's no update. That's correct. There's, there's no change in the expected. Um, well, Sean Magana now has his uh, hand up. Hi, is it okay, Sam? If I, yes, Sean. I, I can't talk a lot. Sorry again. Um, my wife got her wisdom teeth out. That's why I'm uh, I'm nursing that tonight. But um, this is what wasn't spent from the FY23 reserve. So you allocated part of the FY23 reserve to support FY24 projects. This is the balance of what wasn't allocated to support FY24 projects. Okay. And there's not anticipated to be any additional funds. This is the maximum we could put aside. Uh, there, again, there might be, when we close out the year, there might be a little bit more that we could do if we do this in the fall. But the what we've been discussing is what do we want to do with the FY23 reserve, not if receipts come in a little bit better. Um, if receipts come in a little bit better, we usually put that towards the next round of um, awards, which would be FY25. Okay, perfect. Thanks. Not able to see everyone here, but are there, uh, Sean, I assume you're done. Your hand is still up here. Any other comments from anyone? Okay. So we have a motion and we have a second. Uh, I think it makes sense to proceed to a vote. I'm going to go ahead and call on members uh, and uh, say aye or no. Uh, again, it's to move to recommend the establishment of a budgeted reserve for the fiscal year 2024 in the amount of $164,463. Uh, Tim. Aye. Matt. Aye. Michelle. Aye. David. Aye. Katie. Aye. Robin. Aye. I will vote aye as well. So the motion passes seven to zero. Um, the only other item I have on the agenda relates to our application and dates. Um, I think it makes sense. That there's two different things here. I guess the first question is when would we wish to open the cycle for applicants to be to uh, submit proposals. Last year, the cycle was from September 1st through September 30th. The committee had discussed the previous summer <clears throat> that we might wish to have a greater window of time for applicants to uh, submit proposals. That is to say, a, a greater time might uh, be beneficial. Um, and I had spoken with uh, town staff and the uh, recommendation was that the existing cycle in the fall works quite well for the town staff, but perhaps an earlier opening of the cycle uh, 
we could move a, a week or two in advance. Um, yes, Robin. Oh yeah, I just wanted to speak in favor of moving it up um, between two and four weeks, just for the uh, for the historic preservation projects. It seems like once somebody gets, usually what happens is somebody gets wind of the fact that the application process is opening. They know nothing about it. They don't have time to get uh, consultants or uh, estimates in hand. Um, they may not understand the process. They don't have a lot of time to consult with the historical commission. So if we could uh, move that opening date up sooner, that would be great for my perspective. Michelle. Yeah, I, I agree with what Robin said. And I'm wondering, is, is there any downside to opening it up more than two weeks just for people to get a consultant and get their foot in the door like what what's the downside or pros and cons of even three weeks four weeks prior to the fiscal year for the town a uh, good question um i don't know with certainty regarding the town um one question is do you know would we be in position to have a general uh info information session for the community even if the application process has opened i don't see why we couldn't um and the other question would be from a town standpoint uh yes david um you have raised this the question of concern that i had about an informational session okay at least about 30 days before proposals are the proposal opening up the period, but the opportunity for those individuals who may need additional information or have questions before they start writing. Okay. Um, the, I understand your comment, David. Uh, we've spoken of that in the past. Uh, I do have some thoughts. Uh, yes, Robin. Your hand is up, Robin. Yeah. Yep. I'm here. Um, yeah, I think we had also talked about um, the possibility of a pre-announcement. You know, not necessarily opening the application period, but announcing in say August first, so that people get a, could get in touch with the respective commissions that they mm -hmm. be working with. This would be another opportunity if the town, for some reason, had reservations about opening the application period earlier. That certainly seems like a good idea to me. That is to say that the uh, more information or notice is better than less. Um, in the past, the town has sent emails out. Uh, Sean, I have a question for you if you're able to hear me. Can you hear me, Sean? I see Sean's hand is up. Uh, can you unmute Sean, please? Okay. Yeah, I can hear you saying. So, um, I, from your perspective, is there any issue, uh, regardless of what date we sent for the application opening, uh, for the town to be able to send out or place on the website notices regarding the time frame for the application cycle? I know we have the propose a project on the website, and we will show that display in a little bit here. Um, but uh, what are your thoughts about uh, notification to the public regarding in advance of the opening of the application cycle? Um, we can set, I mean, we can notify people two weeks or, you know, a month ahead of, ahead of this uh, application opening. You know, when I talked about this with Sam a little bit, the, the length of the application window isn't necessarily the issue because people can start working on their application before the window opens and, and the committee doesn't get the projects until the application window closes and then we send them all out to the committee. So, you know, depending if you want committees to have more time with them, in some ways you have, you have to decide, does it go to the, your individual committees before it's submitted to CPA or after they're done and after the application window closes and then we send them over. But um, the, the length of the window, we could extend a couple of weeks or a month if that's what's needed. But again, that might not necessarily give people more time. That's just going to mean the windows open longer. Um, but again, we can notify people um, that the window's coming up. 
and we can uh, have the sample application on the web so people can know what questions are going to be asked. Uh, great. Uh, that's that's good to hear, Sean. Um, I had mentioned previously, and we talked about this before, that it would be beneficial, I think, uh, and Sean has agreed, uh, that for us to have a sample application form on the website, this, that is to say the town site under the CPA uh, page uh, as a resource so that potential applicants could see what it is they need to do. Right now, the only way to locate it is under the, uh, once the cycle opens or under prior year's projects, which are filled with data. So that's one thing we can do. We can seek to have additional notifications on our own external to the town. Although the town communications is by far and away the most effective way of getting the word out, at least that's been my observation. Uh, there are many people in town who receive the automatic emails that uh, the town communication director sends out. Um, we could also look to uh, placing something in the, the newspaper and on our Facebook page, et cetera. Um, <clears throat> but the, the determinations that are at present I see are twofold. One is determining a general time frame for when we want to open up the application cycle. Um, willingness, uh, which we've heard affirmatively from the town to send out notifications in advance, um, and probably the more probably two notifications, maybe a month and two weeks. Um, and then uh, <clears throat> the third item for discussion distinct from the dates would be taking a look at what the proposal project form looks like, which we'll do in a little bit here. Uh, Robin, your hand is up. Yep. I'm here. Um, yeah, I would um, just responding to Sean's comment. I would um, suggest that a pre-application notification just direct people with questions. I mean, I'm just speaking for the historical commission here, but if they if we had the month of August where that information goes out into the public, people start thinking about it, and that notification says contact the historical commission. That would be a huge help, I think, to get people to us in that, you know, August meeting. We could even push our August meeting toward later to accommodate <clears throat> being able to meet with applicants. Um, that would be, I think that would be a big improvement over what usually happens is everybody hears about it September 1st. There's one meeting. There's no opportunity to go over anything. So thanks. I concur, Robin, of the benefit of having uh, visible contact information for the various representative committees and commissions. Uh, <clears throat> I did take a look on the various town sites to identify who's listed at present and the contact information. Uh, and there's multiple avenues. One is to refer potential applicants to the town CPA and the town, excuse me, the various commission sites. It could be go to the rec commission, go to the, uh, or go to the CPA uh, town boards and committees and find your relative uh, appropriate committee there. And some of the committees have contact information emails. Some of them don't have any names, but we can find an avenue to communicate this. And I understand your comments, Robin, both in terms of pragmatism and uh, past experience. Uh, Matt. So I, I'm just trying to understand the process here. Like what new information is provided when the application opens? Is this just a question of letting people know or is there some new information that people have to act on when the application opens? Um, if the application has changed, there is it does it change from year to year slightly not necessarily this not year but probably not this year in past years there have been some significant changes not major from a time frame but there have been adjustments in terms of the fields I mean, of what what's, was what's to stop someone like why wouldn't someone start preparing now for 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 the application i would but we have a very large community. Some individuals and groups may not have 
it may not have entered their radar as a possibility. Yeah, I think, um, I think I'm sorry to jump in, but I think that, I mean, from my committee's perspective, that's the major issue. People hear about it. People hear about CP, CPA funding for historic preservation projects on September 1st. They don't know about it beforehand. We don't do anything to publicize it. And so that's what makes the short time frame so problematic. Some people, some people know about it ahead of time and come prepared like, I mean, may, maybe that cycle. should be. I, I think a pre-announcement then makes a lot of sense. Where, where, yes. where we say, you know, this is what, and we can even wrap it into, you know, what we approve for the, the cycle that's just starting. You know, <laughs> CPA approved all this stuff. If you are, have a project, you know, get ready. You have to find out more. Visit the CPA website. Visit the committees for his, you know. Idea. You know, these are the yep. categories. These are the committees for each category. Get in Correct. touch with them. Correct. And I think also on the CPA page, having in one or two examples of successful applications would be helpful too. At present, the applications are all listed uh, on the left-hand side under fiscal years, year by year, every application yeah. uh, lives on those that were accepted and those that weren't. Uh, and there's also a report for each year that indicates the outcomes for every application. But uh, my observations have been just in my own search. Um, the item that I found uh, that could be improved, let's say, uh, is a specific reference to the contact information for the relevant um, commissions and committees that uh, many of you are representing right now, the Rec Commission, the uh, Conservation Commission, Housing, uh, Historic Commission, uh, those are the four really. Uh, and right now in the CPA plan, there's a reference to go to the their, go to the town website under board and committees and find your contact information there. I think we could place something on the primary page and in a communication as you suggest, Matt and Robin. Uh, yeah, Michelle, I mean, I'm sorry. I, I uh, just, I'm just looking ahead, at, Matt. I'm just looking at the uh, CPA page on the town mm -hmm. website. There's at the top, there's, you know, propose a community preservation act project, which is a good page. I think um, if we just like add some more information to that in terms of what we said, the committees and uh, the explicitly say the committees and also explicitly maybe give an example of a, of a successful project. So, so Matt, uh, your comment is timely because uh, one of the two items under this, it's application dates we have to select and I wanna show the current page that you're talking about. Um, I think it may make sense, and uh, I see your hand, Michelle. I'll, I'll call you again in a moment. I think it may make sense for us uh, if we recognize that there's uh, a desire and an interest in uh, notifications in advance. Uh, if we operate on the assumption that we will be providing advanced notifications through a few avenues, if we do that, when would we want to open up the cycle? Currently, it's been the 30th, uh, excuse me, the 1st through the 30th of September. Busy month. Um, of course, August is busy. It works with the, it, it aligns with the town's um, processes for us to conduct these uh, application cycle ending at the end of September. Um, we could go slightly earlier if we want. Are there any opinions from members on that? It may not be the most significant issue as Matt has alluded to. Um, I see hands up and I'm going to call on Michelle. Thanks, Sam. Um, just, to, just to bring some good points together, I like the pre-announcement idea of the month headway and the contacts for all the relevant um, agent commissions, whatever. And I like reaching out on different avenues, not just the town website, because a lot of people just don't go. It's kind of clunky, honestly, and hard to find information on the town website. So in any other way, you can get it to sort of different different people that are using different information sources, all the better. 
Else. Oh, I like the idea of a template. I think successful applications are great, but if we could determine what we want to see and what is easiest for us to review, getting something in a template form for people to sort of converge on providing information would be much easier to review quickly. Um, so we talked about providing successful applications, but a lot of the times those are not successful because of the application format, but successful for other reasons. So templates are great for people. I think it just cuts down hours of works on applicants' ends. As far as the opening date, um, would the town know what, what the funding opportunity is before the normal time that we do it? I mean, that's the only consideration that I have for that one. Um. Uh, I, Sean, can you respond to that? Or are you in a position to? I know last year and prior years, uh, Michelle, we were able to confirm the funding sometime in August. Uh, I, my understanding was that town staff is extremely busy wrapping up prior year and initiating new year budgeting cycles, uh, and that July is a difficult month to arrive at those numbers. And we also have to hear from matching funds uh, from uh, state uh, Sean, do you have any comment regarding when typically our committee is aware of what our uh, expected funds are? There's a chance he's occupied here. Um, I'm not seeing that here. Uh, Jen, do you have any comment on that? I know Sean handles it. Um, Not able to hear you. Can you yeah, hear I me? Think oh. We can hear you now. I think that is a busy time of year with um, wrapping up end of fiscal year and starting the new fiscal year. Um, but I would definitely run that by Sean as well. And I can okay. make a comment to ask him if he didn't hear. Okay. And we can also, Michelle, uh, we know the approximate range that the funds, we won't know the exact, but for applicants sake, they will uh, have an idea from prior year awards. Uh, and there aren't too many, I guess uh, my comment would be, it, it, yes, it's a good idea. But if I was an applicant, I would, apply regardless of what that overall available funds was. Um, and any information we can provide would be beneficial, but it's a good thing to include if we were to know it. My guess is that comes a little bit later. Uh, yes, Robin. Uh, Katie, I'm not sure if you were first or not. Uh, I was just gonna say keep it 9-1 to 9-30. Pardon? Keep the dates 9-1 to 9-30, that's my feeling. Okay, uh, Katie. Well, that, Robin, you were saying earlier though you wanted you thought a little bit longer opening two weeks before, or did oh, you mean if that if that if we have a an announcement in August, maybe one or two, then it's really yeah. not it's really it was the, the earlier opening was just to allow for people to know about it. But if we do an effective job letting people know and directing them to the historical commission, then that that meets that goal. So got it. Yeah, I I would I I would agree with that and what Michelle was saying sort of um, making sure that we do that outreach um, is important and I'm not sure how that happens and who does that if we need to be supportive of the town and doing that I'm happy to try to be helpful with that um, so I'm in favor of 9-1 to 9-30 um, if we can get that you know announcement out early in August if we could with all of what everyone else has said about, you know, having the application information so people at a template or any of those things so people know what they're possibly having to gather or do or meet. And one question I had is about um, the, in, well, two questions. One was we did an info session at the end of August last year. And I mm -hmm. think my recommendation would be to have an info session soon after the application opens so that people are actually in it and doing it. Um, instead and also you know feeling like people are back from vacations and other places and and have a chance to um to understand what questions they might have about it um but the other question i had was around um 
the require, I know it's my recollection is that people aren't required to go to each of the commissions or committees to get approval in order to submit. And so there's a little bit of confusion about, we recommend, we highly, I think we use language like we highly recommend. Um, and so I, I think last time we talked about this, which maybe was two summers ago, I was saying that is confusing the folks. Like it, it feels like it should, it's help. It's been helpful to have the commission say, "Hey, this is a good thing," or "It's not a good thing," or "We think you need extra support," or to do take it an extra step. Um, so I kind of lean in the direction of having it be required. And I know in the conversation that felt like it was a hurdle and a barrier to folks, which I also understand. Um, but I wondered if highly recommend was enough to say that you get sort of maybe in the application we give people sort of an extra consideration or something that really motivates people to go to those commissions and committees versus saying it's not required. Cause I think we, that's we highly recommend it twice. <laughs> I, I, yes. Uh, it's a slight Katie, difference. So I just throwing that out there. It, it is clearly in the interest of some applicants to um, it's in the interest of all applicants to meet with their respective uh, committees or commissions, uh, some applicants truly need uh, information. Uh, and that, the concern with mandating it is if somebody has the potential for a very good proposal and their the meeting times may not be exist, I wouldn't want to exclude their capacity to submit an application on September 28th. Um, but uh, we, we could consider phraseology both in announcements and otherwise. I, I do believe that uh, making the relevant uh, representative committees and commissions contact information uh, more readily available uh, will assist. Uh, it won't assist everyone, of course, and uh, there will be applicants who here at the last minute and may not be able to get it together. Uh, if I were seeking to apply, I would certainly try to identify uh, who to speak to, and I think it, having that information on the site would be helpful. Um, Robin. Oh, I'm just um, having a bunch of thoughts in my head. I mean, one thought is that, you know, the Historical Commission could specifically schedule their August meeting to have an agenda item for applicants. I mean, if we can get, again, get sort of ahead of the, ahead mm -hmm. of the wave there, um, any language that, you know, would go out in the announcements that, to say that we're, that we're dedicating a portion of the meeting specifically to that, I think might be useful. Yeah. Uh, Tim. Yes, um, let me come back to the requirement. Uh, um, for me, I, really think less highly of an application if a group has not gone through a committee. So I almost favor saying it's required because I think they start out with a handicap and uh, I don't know how others feel, but I'm not quite sure the reason why we would say highly recommend as opposed to require, maybe just to raise that question. Um, my response would be that there have been times where there have been strong applications well put together that have come in later in the application cycle without the time frame for the various committees. Um, and it is a state funded, it's a town funded tax dollars. And I would be, my own my own opinion, one, one person would be hesitant to exclude the capacity for applicants to be able to submit something. And the committee always has the, ability to not approve funding for any application and certainly uh, an incomplete or uh, improperly vetted internally uh, within their own would be a reason and we could say something accordingly that uh, it's strongly recommended uh, it is considered it, and it is referenced in the uh, term in our descriptions and we could highlight that in greater uh, underlining or otherwise. So that, that would be my thought. I just have a, uh, I have a natural uh, inherent mindset of uh, not adding uh, 
not preventing, not not having a barrier to a potentially good applicant late. Um, but we also can easily, and we have done so uh, in this past cycle, uh, not moved on a proposal that may not have been appropriately put together. Uh, I do, uh, and it may be that there are certain uh, categories and historic preservation is one of them where there's greater, uh, even greater impact, I think, potentially uh, because of the materials component that people may not consider. Uh, that's just my opinion. Um, so um, a couple of things here. We're talking about the dates aside and we're and we're merging that with the general description. I'd like to get us back to the dates for the moment. Um, on the assumption that we have at least two notifications earlier, well in advance, at least a month, uh, from the town, distinct from anything our committee might do. Uh, does anyone have an interest in changing the general application cycle of the 1st of September through the 30th of September? Would anyone want to make it any earlier? Does everyone think that that's a uh, raise your hand if you think that application cycle of the 1st through the 30th of September is a good one? Uh, with notification. Okay, so that's a good discussion then. So the, the real issue is not the date and I will communicate with Sean regarding that so that we will add that to the uh, process. <clears throat> now, I'm gonna share my screen if I'm able to, Jen. I'd like to um, display what Matt was referring to previously on the, um, and I've got to find it, forgive me. I've got to, I wanna display the, <clears throat> town CPA site and just bear with me while I navigate through my uh, computer screen, which has all kinds of stuff going on. So I'm gonna go to the town website. And there, I'm not sharing my screen yet, I don't believe. I'm gonna go to boards and committees as soon as this pops up. Stay with me, please. Your government boards and committees, A through M. Scroll down, Community Preservation Act Committee. It's on my screen. I'm going to share my screen. I won't be able to see you, I don't think, uh, but let's proceed accordingly. Um, Almost there, share screen. Let's see if this works. <clears throat> Can everyone see the um, Community Preservation Act page? Someone raise a hand. I see Matt's yes. hand going up, yes. so I'm gonna assume that's a yes. Uh, we can also see ourselves there. So this is the current page and I had looked at it over the last couple of weeks and I had my own thoughts. I want to identify a few things that exist in case we haven't looked at it in some time. On the left-hand side, we see each fiscal year where all the applications exist. So I'm going to click quickly on last year's proposals, CPA proposals for 2024, and they are listed in order. All the details that we receive, public information by category. So anyone can click on a given project uh, and see exactly what was included in the application. It's certainly quite, it would be helpful to me to see this if I was an applicant, but it is populated with a different project. So that's one thing to note that this exists. I'm gonna back out of this if I'm able. Uh, how do I shrink this on my screen? Too many things open. Okay, it, I lost it. So I'm gonna go back again. Stay with me. That took me to the form center. So we'll go here. No, I don't want that. I want the CPA. Back to the form page. How do I shrink this? If anyone use the sees the back button, use the back button. 
Thank you. One more time. Great. Uh, thank you, Matt and Tim. Um, on the top here, I'll, I'll, actually, before I click on that, let's go back one more time. When they first arrive at our page, we have this information here, which is referencing last year currently. Uh, we can add and I can communicate with Sean that will include both the appropriate application cycle uh, information. Uh, we don't have a regular meeting. We can discuss when we want to um, have an information session. And it might be, as Katie suggested, during applications. I'm not sure. But this is information that we need to change right here. Uh, in addition, on the site, we do have a Facebook page, which, by the way, I encourage everyone to share. Uh, when we click on it, it brings us to, we can announce this way, but there's really not a lot of individuals on here right now. We have 116 followers. We can have multiple notifications this way. I don't know that it would reach sufficient individuals, but we can do so. Um, let me go back. Sam, can I, can I just jump in? Can the yep. towns, I'm on the town Facebook page. Do they send out CPA is open? Yes. Okay. They have done that as a part of the announcement cycle and we can request that they do so uh, again. Um, so yes, they do. And it's a very worthwhile idea. I think that any any method that gets the word out is the objective. It's a community, community preservation act committee. And so uh, I'm, I, for one, am in favor of whatever we can do to uh, make raise awareness. Uh, been trying to do so. That I think we've received some uh, inquiries that we might not have otherwise, but there's a step-by-step -step progress in the right direction and uh, learning curve. Uh, right now, when individuals uh, come to the site, we perhaps could highlight this slightly differently, propose a project, but this is what they see. Um, this is last year's uh, fiscal year CPA window. It says it's closed, but we will have a link that appears here that goes to an application. Uh, so when the application opens, this is where that link would also be found. There's a lot of information here on the site. And when I went through this, which has the evaluation criteria, submission process, this is something that everyone would look at. The one thing that I noted uh, <clears throat> that would be worth including and highlighting is what Robin referenced earlier, uh, which is that we highlight in the submission process, applicants are highly encouraged to contact and consult with the relevant boards, commissions, and committees in advance of the application submittal as referenced above, but we can include uh, information in terms of how to reach them here. Um, I realize this is kind of a clumsy way to look at it at this meeting, uh, but we have done a lot in the past to have a lot of information here, and we can highlight in multiple locations uh, in bold, if need be, the need for applicants to consider uh, contacting the relevant committees. We have the types of information, but we don't reference we don't reference any specific contact information. We allude to it, but we don't highlight it. So that's something that we can add in very visible um, font on this site here. I'm assuming the town would go along with that. Uh, but the propose a project is something that Sean had put together last year uh, based on our input uh, or added to the site based on our input to describe for new applicants. And we alluded to this in our information session uh, about what all the what they all need. So um, my thoughts are that we on the CPA homepage and under propose a project, we have a section that highlights the contact information for the applicants. Um, there's a lot of information on here. It may be difficult to uh, change it dramatically, but I think if we highlight uh, the process and if we have a sample application on the website that they can look at, um, 
the, those are the two main things as I see it, a sample application that they can review and the contact information for the relevant boards. Um, but I wanted to, to show this to individuals so they can see how applicants what they look at when they're trying to apply and they're looking at this essentially it's not perfectly clear at least as I as I see it they have to arrive and we will send a link out but they have to arrive at the CPA page and then within here they have to find uh, there will be something highlighted on the top here but it's not the most uh intuitive process um I don't know if my showing this is helping or just adding some confusion to folks, but I wanted everyone to be aware that we have year by year references to previous applications, propose a project, we could potentially change that to propose slash apply for a proposal. Uh, we can change the dates. Um, ultimately, I think the key is simply are getting the words out that the cycle opens and having uh, information available to applicants. Um, yes, Robin. Well, you're muted. Do you have something to say, Robin? I do. <laughs> okay. Um, my only brief comment is yes, I would like to see uh, apply for CPA funds as opposed to propose a CPA project. Just yeah. like funds is kind of a more active part of it. Uh, apply for CPA funds slash project or something to proposal. Yeah. We refer to the term proposal in many other locations. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, Tim? Yeah, I would put in FY 2025. Yes, <laughs> uh, makes a lot of sense. Now that, that can be confusing to some, uh, not everyone understands the distinction between calendar year and fiscal year. Oh, I know. Uh, right. And I'm not sure uh, if someone looked at that, despite having gone through all kinds of accounting classes and everything else, my my mindset when I see 2024, I think 2024 uh, or current years as opposed to fiscal year 25, meaning that's when it's available, but you really need to apply now. Uh, so I'm not sure how to phrase that. Uh, propose a CPA funds, uh, apply for CPA funds slash project. This cycle. This cycle. So, well, uh, so one way that I've dealt with this is <laughs> put in the FY and then in parentheses next to it, put in the year range. So okay. just maybe hard to fit all this, but we can, okay. I'm sure we can find something. Uh, uh, it seems like there's an agreement that a different phraseology might be beneficial. I, like, I don't I like funds. <laughs> yes, I agree. And app, apply is active. But propose. I, I would suggest putting the, the FYI when you when you click on that and you get to the next page, it says FY24 is closed. And so presumably it would be updated to say FY25. And like Michelle said, with the dates yeah. um, is open or whatever. This, this uh, site is, of course, a, the town site. <laughs> uh, so uh, it's not one that we edit. Uh, we make recommend requests and or yes, recommendations. Right. Yeah. Yeah, uh, exactly. The town has been uh, quite uh, uh, accommodating uh, to date in terms of improvements that have occurred so far uh, compared to, say, three years ago. I think there's a lot of additional information that has been added, uh, but and we can make these requests and hopefully uh, some of them could be heard. Um, and let me see our panel screen. I, I don't know if you can hear me, Sean, or not. I'm curious if uh, these comments that we're making regarding phraseology, if you believe they would be amenable. I'm not able to see the entire screen here. I mean, if, if there's like a town website administrator, these aren't huge things to Correct. check, right? So it's just not our, uh, we don't have yeah. the authority to specifically it. make the changes on the town site. But I but I think the uh, 
the desire is clear. Uh, yeah. So, can I ask a question though? Um, and this maybe doesn't have an answer right at this moment, but does anybody know how other towns distribute information about CPA funding opportunities? Sometimes it's just interesting to see if there's any like sort of more progressive ways to do it or successful ways to do it, but sort of just keep your eye out or something. But, um, you know, there's a lot of other people to learn from out there too. I would uh, say that a good place to uh, research is the CPA Coalition site, which is the statewide organization. And they have a specific charter to recruit new towns and to support existing CPA communities. Uh, and they're quite responsive given the volume of activity that they do. Uh, they've had some good suggestions in the past. And uh, Stuart, who runs them, they have another individual have been. Uh, and you can also see uh, on that site uh, examples of differing communities and what they uh, have done. So I, I think that's a good place to go. Um, <clears throat> but uh, what I'm, you know, there's a few things here. One is the date cycle. I believe we've confirmed. I believe we've confirmed that we wish to send out noti notifications uh, multiple times in advance. I believe we uh, have agreed that there is a desire to both highlight the uh, apply for CPA funds as opposed to propose a project if we're able, uh, and that we would like to highlight contact information for the relative committees. I'd like to show uh, the committee members uh, what is displayed on the varying committees for contact information currently, uh, in case they have thoughts. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on, and I had written them down in a spreadsheet, uh, and I'm not sure what the best route is for what we would use for this contact information, uh, whether it's just referring them to this, uh, or even if we had a central CPA representative who would then forward it. But uh, under the Conservation Commission, uh, Michelle, uh, when individuals come here, they see uh, Aaron Chalk, David Zomack, and a phone number. So um, at present, these would be individuals who would be seen as contact information and would refer, these are the town liaisons for the various committees and they would communicate. Uh, let me go to the next one under recreation. Actually, that's in the second, if we go A through M here. Historical Commission, uh, Robin, you're familiar with this site, I assume. Uh, yeah, it has I'm Nate not, Malloy's contact. Yes, Robin. I don't think we're seeing. Yeah, you know, we're not seeing your your pages. I have a, um, it, you're, we're still all on the um, CPA page, but I have a question. Interesting. Um, I don't think we have the right town representative, but I would short circuit this conversation to ask the town if it's possible to have an alias um, uh, email address like cpafy25 at amherst.gov that would be part of it would just be a tech question so that you'd have one email address that people could write to and whoever that was directed to in the town would just shoot the email off to the respective committee um, that's a good way of doing it um, if uh, we in the past had done so although the town did have uh, a lot of the questions that came in were accounting based, but uh, we can inquire. Yeah, just some just some section where it says for 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 more information or questions, and that email address highlighted. I mean, that's what anybody who's looking. I mean, as somebody, you know, I, I'm sure if any of us have gone to a website and said, "Okay, just show me who I can write to." <laughs> Like I, I understand. And, yeah. and that might be the easiest way somebody in town who could refer them. Uh, but right. I just wanted you to see everyone what's there right now uh, right. so that you have an idea of the, uh, the fact that it's not always as clear as it might be. Can you see it now? My screen? Historical Commission? Uh, we're, you're not sharing. I still just see proposed a CPA. Okay, so I'm going to stop doing that. It's a waste of time. Um, but the 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 thought is that there are differing uh, methods of communication, and I think that's something that could be improved. At a minimum, we can seek 
we can try to uh, add on our own CPA page some method of having uh, easier communication process. Um, let me try, if, see if I can get a hold of Sean one last time. He's our primary uh, folk. Uh, Sean, are you able to hear us at the moment? I know he indicated he would not be available throughout the meeting. And Jen, perhaps you could relay that inquiry. I'm sorry, Sam. What did you say? I'm back home. I can talk. Great. Uh, so we're we're looking at the site, and we've we as a committee have come up with some thoughts on terms of what might make the uh, navigation process easier for applicants. And a couple of them, one would be to the phraseology where it says propose a project, instead indicate apply for CPUNs, CPA funds slash project current cycle. Uh, there was yep, pretty much no unanimity. The other uh, main thing uh, that committee members have agreed on is that it would be helpful for us to have a listing on the site of the specific contacts for any of the representation at any of the uh, coordinating committees, rec commission, historical commission, um, housing authority, and um, which one am I missing? One of these. Um, Conservation Commission. Conservation Commission. Um, the, when we click on the various boards there, and go to the landing pages, there's different information. There are town staff listed, but I don't know if there would be, uh, what would be the most efficient route to have an applicant seek to get referred to the differing committees? Because we want applicants who are proposing projects to contact in advance these representative committees. Um, on our home CPA page at present, uh, it indicates, let's go there. Can I, can I go to the left? I believe it, I can't see it. Can anyone on their own page see the homepage contact information? Forgive me. Well, I can't see it, Sam, but to your point, I mean, we can certainly um, highlight who, uh, we can highlight the different contacts for each of the boards. Okay. Um, I did hear the conversation about having a central CPA email. I, I want to, let me talk to the liaisons for each committee first. Um, my only yeah. concern is who at town hall is going to manage it. And if there's only one and, and they're getting emails for all different um, types of projects, it's just, it might slow it down versus. Oh, oh we've got Holly's, Holly's name on here currently. Uh, she replaced Sonia. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, so this is a question I, I don't know the answer and I can find out if nobody else knows is is there a is there a recreation commission email um is there a conservation commission sort of general email like was mentioned for CPA um mm -hmm. so I, I can talk to the liaisons and see yeah. what would be the best route for getting yeah. people directly connected with those boards um, when um they have projects. Would, the, would the liaisons be the best connection? they might be I'm thinking you know you know, if it's, we can put something where if it is an accounting or, a, you know, a general process question, then maybe that does come to accounting. Um, but if it's a sort of eligibility question, that might go to the liaison or a, um, so, yeah, we can improve that this year. Great. That's that's good to hear. I think uh, those steps, although they are not large, I think they would have an impact. Um, so let me reiterate, uh, application date is confirmed. Uh, communications will be accomplished in multiple avenues from the town uh, and from whatever means we can do. Uh, we have a couple of suggestions for improving the uh, applicant process in terms of apply for CPA funds on the submit a project and contact liaisons. Uh, the one thing we haven't talked about here, aside from any informational templates that we might put together, and if we do, we could send them out in a communication. But uh, <clears throat> last year, and Dave uh, had brought this up earlier, we had an information session. Uh, it was on August 25th. Uh, does anyone have a thought? I'm curious on the committee members' thoughts uh, in terms of that time frame when we might seek and if it's beneficial to have an information session for 
potential applicants. We did it just before the cycle last year. Uh, we do sometimes have difficulty in July uh, based on membership and uh, turnovers that occur in the various representative boards. Um, I did confirm with the town that if we lack quorum in July, we still can meet with uh, existing members if they're willing to show. Uh, but uh, does anyone have a thought in terms of the time frame if we wanted to have an informational session? Uh, for potential applicants. Uh, Michelle? Um, I think maybe Robin or Katie said before, like once you're in the application, that's often when like the very relevant questions come up. Uh -huh. So if we did yeah. have them, maybe have like a second way for people to contact once they're working on it. Yeah. Um, how was the participation in the first information session? Was it there were a few. There weren't a lot, but one of the ones that came in was a major proposal that we wound up approving, although that applicant um, had already, it was already on their radar. I'm referring to the uh, Fort River Fields project. They had already had it in their mindset to uh, apply. I had gone to districts. Uh, I was only successful in making arrangements with District 2 and District 5. Uh, trying to, and it was, uh, the, the counselors were kind enough to give me the opportunity to present uh, about CPA. And um, so I think that's something we didn't do it this spring that we might have, but that is an advanced notification in the spring that led to someone coming to that meeting, uh, Michelle, uh, prepared with questions. So we had a couple of attendees uh, with thorough questions. Really, they just we referred them to the CPA plan, the CPA uh, application, and we asked that they contact the appropriate representative committees. Now they had already uh, done so. Uh, so uh, it wasn't that uh, large participation to my recollection. Um, does anyone have a differing recollection who was there? So it, it didn't seem to be highly attended and it may well be that during the application cycle, uh, might be a good idea. Uh, any other thoughts on that? No, okay. Uh, does anyone think that having a, a, a informational session during the application cycle would not be a good idea or would be a good idea? And just polling the committee. Based on what you said, it sounds like it could have been an email, not a, okay. not a meeting. And then okay. maybe focus in on like the actual application session. When you say the application session, what do you mean? I guess what we had said about once people are actually working on the applications and then they have questions about it. Okay, and that also could occur in contact if they receive the committee liaisons or the committee representatives contact information, that might be the most significant thing if they uh, are a historic preservation contact and are able and get into communication with the historic preservation representative, similarly with the other uh, committees. Uh, yes, Matt. Are, are, you, are you proposing that the information session is actually a CPA committee meeting or, or we, something different? We had it as a CPA committee meeting uh, previously, uh, last August. Uh, we had a specific, it was a regular CPA meeting, but on the agenda, we had an information session for those who might have interest. And in that session, uh, in case there, we didn't know who might attend, in case there were those who were interested but didn't know about it, we talked about the application cycle, we talked about the evaluation criteria, we talked about the categories and we talked about our review process. Uh, so it was wouldn't for it, novices. Wouldn't it, be, wouldn't it be simpler to rather than have a full committee meeting, just have a couple of people from the town and a couple of people from the committee run an information session? Um, <clears throat> we've we, done don't that. Need, we don't need quorum to, to provide that information if we're not going to actually decide anything. There were some requests when we proposed that in the past, Matt, that uh, it was desirable if any individuals from the committee were going to be meeting that we had the whole committee there. 
I'm just saying what popped up in the past. We can I can inquire further regarding that. Uh, I when we proposed it a few years ago, the request was made by some that we any such type of representation would be done as a quorum. However, subsequent to that, I did try to go to the individual districts with information. So it's a reasonable concept to have a meeting with four individuals, but whether it's four individuals or whether it's a uh, full committee, the question remains what would be an adequate time frame for information. Um, it wasn't highly attended. Uh, I'm not hearing strong opinions one way or another from Do anyone. Do you want to poll on just to raise a raise of hands for after the application opens? Does anyone think that having a uh, informational session after the application opens is worthwhile? And if and if we weren't to do that, what would be the alternative? Just contact information emails, perhaps. Uh, so, uh, Robin, your hand is up. Does anyone else think that after the application is a desirable time period to have a meeting? We could also discuss this, I suppose, um, as the fall cycles open. I'm seeing two individuals who, I'm seeing three. Uh, yes, Tim. Yeah, I, I would amend your, I would agree with that. And I'm yeah. looking particularly at the calendar, uh, people yeah. in August versus Labor Day, yeah. September. But I would do it early, like at least yeah. first few days of the application okay. cycle. So. so, all right, that sounds fine. So we can consider that as a possibility. We're likely to meet as a committee in advance of that time period. Maybe, maybe it wouldn't be. And we could uh, discuss. Mm -hmm. uh, um, I, I could add it as an agenda item. I don't think we need to decide it at this moment, but it sounds like there's um, interest from committee members in having some form of session or communication ability for applicants at that time. Does that make sense? And did I say that correctly in terms of what I'm seeing fatigue? <laughs> <laughs> um, Thumbs up. Thumbs up. <clears throat> okay. So uh, I think we've uh, we've covered the items that I had uh, for calling this meeting, which was I wanted to make sure we retain the capacity in fiscal year 2024 to allocate our cash and we put it into reserves. I wanted to discuss the application date cycle, which we have concluded. And I wanted to raise the discussion of how we communicate um, to applicants on the website, specifically the proposal project, the contact information for the various uh, representative committees uh, and and adding a sample application uh, to the website so that anyone who is interested in applying will have a in advance be able to see what the information is. So I don't have any um, additional topics that I did not anticipate before this meeting. Um, so. Does anyone else have anything they would like to add at this moment? And you certainly can email me after the fact with at any time with additional thoughts and comments and we can plan accordingly. Okay, so uh, I'd like to, it's good to see everyone again. And Matt, how's your, uh, how's your leg doing there? At our last meeting, I believe you had uh, just gone skiing and had a lot of fun. <laughs> um my leg is improving but it's still uh an issue i can walk but i can't run okay oh no, Wa no walking no. is uncomfortable wow yikes sorry to hear that uh well there's other exercise avenues i suppose uh biking is good oh cool cool and there the are competitions memorial in pool <laughs> yeah there are competitions in biking as well um, so good to see you all. Thank you for uh, attending on relative short notice here. I believe we've gotten ourselves to where we need to be at this point in time uh, in anticipation of the next cycle. I'm not sure which members will seek to continue on with the committee. Um, that's 
to be determined. I would like to recommend to any members who are on their individual representative committees, the four commit, the five committees of planning, uh, <clears throat> rec, conservation commission, historic commission, and housing, that they initiate communications with their membership and speak with the uh, town manager's office because there's a bit of a cycle. I know that our committee is, um, <clears throat> I've been contacted regarding interview process for some vacancies that are occurring, but it takes a little bit of time. So the sooner that that is initiated, the easier. Uh, we do have the slight flexibility for anyone who's staying on, uh, according to the town office, to be able to meet in July if uh, we haven't had turnovers or anything. So uh, any other comments from anyone? Okay. Uh, I'm going to call this meeting uh, to a conclusion uh, and adjourn it at 7.24 p.m. Uh, thank you all for your time. Thank you. Thanks, Sam. Good to see everybody. Bye, -bye. Bye guys. Thanks. Bye.